Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be solving a Diophantine equation, which means an equation with integer solutions. We have 3a plus 5ab plus b equals 39. a and b are integers, and we're going to be finding a plus b. So Diophantine equations are interesting because we're usually given an equation, a number of equations, the number less than the number of variables, Sometimes you have two variables, three variables, but only one equation. But you're looking for integer solutions. And in some cases, there are no solutions. Let's find out if we have any solutions from this equation. I'll try to present two different approaches. You may or may, may not call them two different methods. So first method, I'm going to go ahead and factor out something. Now, obviously, these two terms have a common factor. And I kind of want to start with the product of two variables. Maybe kind of write it like this, 5ab plus 3a plus b equals 39. Now, if you go ahead and take out an a here, then inside you're going to have 5b plus 3. And that'll be followed by a b. I want to use factoring by grouping, which means that I should be getting a common factor after the first step. But in this case, I'm not getting it. First of all, there are three terms. You need four terms. But I can always add something to both sides, but in this case, I get stuck. Well, we don't get stuck, but let's pretend we do. So now we're going to back up a little bit. And instead of taking out an A, I'll be taking out 5A. You know why? The motivation behind that? If I take out 5A, then I'll be left with B, which kind of agrees with this one. Make sense? So you kind of need to make it work. Great. So let's go ahead and factor out 5a and then inside we're going to have b. Now here you need to be a little careful because how do you get 3a from 5a, right? Okay, the answer is simple. 3 over 5. That's what you got to do, right? Fractions. You have to use fractions. Who doesn't like fractions, right? Nobody. Okay, plus b. Now notice that we have b plus 3 over 5 inside the parentheses, so I should have the same thing here, which means I should be adding 3 over 5 to both sides, and that's okay, don't worry, we'll fix it in a little bit. Okay? So far, so good? All right. Now, if you notice that b plus 3 over 5 is a common factor, right? Let's circle it so you can see this is a common factor. So we can basically factor it out. But what is it multiplied by? Well, it's multiplied by 1 if there is no number, right? So we're going to put a little 1 here. And then when we take out b plus 3 over 5, we're going to multiply it by 5a plus 1, which comes from here. Make sense? You need a number there. And here, you can leave it like this. Or if you want to make a common denominator and add, that's fine too. But that's not necessary. I'll show you. Because our goal is to kind of get rid of the fractions, right? So let's multiply both sides by 5. Multiply by 5 and multiply by 5. Now, when you multiply by 5 here, you, of course, you're going to distribute it here so you can get rid of the fraction. That'll give you 5b plus 3. Nice. And then this will give you 5a plus 1. Super duper. On the right-hand side, you can go ahead and distribute this that's going to give you 5 times 39, which is 195. And then here, 5s are going to cancel out, and we're going to end up with a 3, which means you'll, you're getting 198. Nice. Great. Now, from here, we should be able to solve for A and B, right? You, I usually like to write the A first so that it's in some kind of alphabetical order, just an obsession, you know, like an OCD type of thing, whatever you call it. But this is what I like to write it as. Now, to solve for this, we kind of need to consider factors of 198. But at the same time, we have to, at the same time, we need to be careful because the factors are one of them is one mod five, the other one is one mod three. So, for example, four would not work, and two would not work either because two is none of these. Okay, makes sense. Uh, when you factor this, you're using the appropriate numbers. For example, one times 198 would that work? Possibly, because uh, 1 is going to fit here, right? And 198 is going to fit here. Notice that we're going to be getting uh, integer solutions from here. For example, a will be 0 and 5 
B will be 39. And you can definitely check that. This is kind of easy to check because in the original problem, if you think about it, if you think about it, A equals 0 will get rid of these terms and you're going to end up with B equals 39 right away. What about B equals 0? Is that going to give us something right away too? Absolutely, because 3A and 39 are both divisible by 3. So when B is 0, you're going to get A equals 13. So we have these solutions, but there are many other solutions. Maybe not that many. I didn't check. But if you go off of these values, you're going to be getting, for, for example, from here, A plus B is going to be 39. And from here, A plus B is just going to be 13. So those are two possible answers uh, that answers this question. Make sense? Great. And we can definitely find more solutions, but we have to make sure it works. For example, I already told you 2 is not going to work, so don't bother using it. But how do you factor 198? What is 198? 198 is 11 times 18, isn't it? I think so, right? Yeah. So uh, 18 is 2 times 9. And that is 2 times 3 squared. So this number actually has a lot of factors. Well, not really that many, but 2 times 2 times 3, which is 12. 12 positive factors. We use some of them. But if you think about how you can make different factors, for example, 9 would be a factor, but would 9 fit one of these? If you think about 9, 9 is 4 mod 5. So it's not going to work, you see? Or if you use 18, is that going to work? 18 is... 3 mod 5, so it might work here. But if this is 18, this is to be 11. And guess what? That works. So A equals 2, B equals 3 is another solution. And from here we get 5. You see, these are possible solutions for A plus B. And you can definitely explore, see if you can find more solutions. I'm not going to go through all of them because that's for you to do. Okay? Make sense? These are not ordinary factors. These are special factors. So we have to be careful. Let's go ahead and talk, uh, talk about the second approach here. For my second approach, obviously, I'm going to start off with the same equation, but treat it a little differently. How? We need to... Well, notice that when we did it this way, we kind of had to get rid of the expression, like uh, get rid of the fractions, right? So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to start with the product again, but... Since uh, a common factor does not, does not look like a, a good one, I'm going to multiply everything by 5. And the reason behind that is I just want to double up on the factor uh, of this, like, I mean, the coefficient for the product, in other words, so that both of these can have a 5 in common. Does that make sense? I hope it does. So like 25AB plus 15A plus 5B equals 39. Now, you, you can go ahead and factor out a 5a because they both have it. And now inside you're going to have 3b, I'm sorry, it's 5b plus 3. And then you have 5b plus 3 and that'll just equal 42. Wait a minute, did I not add? Hmm. Why am I getting different answers, right? That should be the same. Because when I take this out, it's going to be 5a plus 1 times 5b plus 3 equals 42. We added 3 to both sides. But here, we added, hmm, let's find out. We added 3 fifths, and when we multiplied, they gave us 195 plus a 3. Okay, I think it'll work, but why did we get a different number here? That's really weird. Oh, yes, because I did not multiply the right-hand side by 5. That's why, okay, my mistake. This is supposed to be 195. 8 as before, right? That's what it is, right? 150 plus 45, okay. That's what it is. And then, of course, after you add the... You don't add anything, never mind. I'm confusing myself here. So we're going to get back to the same thing. Yes, sorry about that. And it'll be the exact same thing. Of course, we already talked about it. As you know, the factors are right here. It's just a slightly different approach. I hope you like it. And this brings us to the end of this video. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time in another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.